Okay, we are live. Welcome everybody to the Butter Dish Gals very first live stream on YouTube. We are so excited that you're here. Myself, Coach Adek, Coach Emily, and Coach Jane, we are going to be doing something very unique. We are going to be coaching Coach Jane, our very own Coach Jane, through the priming process, which is the hardest part about of the 90-day program that you guys have seen on other YouTube channels where they talk about going through the process. This is the most important and the most difficult of the priming process. And our own coach Jane has so graciously decided to enter into this process herself. So with that, I would love it, Coach Jane, if you would be so kind to explain why you decided to prime. Right. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I started out low carb for many, many years and then I went keto. That was okay. And then for quite a while I was ketovore. So a little bit of keto, mainly carnivore. And I've been carnivore, pure carnivore, probably for about two months now. Where I've oh, I didn't know that. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. All carnivore. Um, two months, all carnivore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say I'm still drinking a little bit of tea. I can't, I'm yeah. trying to bring myself off the tea and I am doing, I mean, I was, I was probably having six or eight cups of tea a day and I'm probably down to two oh, that's good. with the help of Cherish's uh, fatty lattes, yes, which, I am good, yes. which I am now addicted to. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> um, obviously, you know that I'm doing the extra butter, which is, which is great. Um, but my issue is I can't eat very much. I yeah. really struggle. And part of it is I get bored with what's on the plate. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is I just get full. So it's, and I've had this ever since I was a child. So when I was very small, if, if, they, oh, if my mom used to overfill my plate, it was like, I'm not going to eat this. I can't eat it. And also I was... I grew up in a household where it was wrong to waste food. Mm -hmm. so it was like, you will sit there and you will eat it. And, and I think it's, it's, so some of it's, I know it's psych psychological that, that if I put a big plate of food in front of me, so if I put two steaks on the plate, there is not hope. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just not going to, it's, it's just not going to do it. So, and, and you'll see my body composition. Uh, I don't know if we'll show it later, um, but I really okay struggle to put weight on so i can put weight on if i eat carbs that's easy you know right. yeah i mean i can put well very easily putting car eating carbs my weight will go up i don't feel great but i bulk out a bit mm -hmm. um and i would actually like to my um my actual body fat is actually very low i, I saw that down yeah. to 14 percent last time they checked right yeah yeah. 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 And actually, I would like to get that up a little bit, especially as I get older. Um, I think it's I think it's healthier. I think postmenopausal, I think it's it's better for me. Um, and also, I would like my bone density to increase a little and just generally to be able to eat more. OK, you know, awesome. it, yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping I'm a little scared. <laughs> Don't but, be scared. <laughs> We're here challenge. for you. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. probably should take a step back. And Coach Emily, would you do the audience a favor for those that don't know? What is priming exactly and why should we do it? Yeah. So um, this is a protocol that Raymond has been using with his clients for several years now. Raymond is on that coaches in um, SB Yang. Um, and so he just figured out being in the carnivore space, we figure out what often happens carnivore and low carb. And this can happen in general is that women under eat. And so priming is like the antithesis to under eating. And so it's a bit of a training. Um, you take a period of time. He noticed that for most of his clients, it really took 10 days, 10 to 14 days of going through kind of like a, a super feasting period. So it's this period where you are eating 
three times a day plus snacks in the first week and the second week you're just eating three times a day and it's all carnivore food. And so he just noticed that if he could get his clients to really embrace this feasting foundation and get this started, that they wouldn't fall off and have cravings. They wouldn't uh, run into under eating. And the same thing that, that Jane's talking about, it raises the metabolic rate and it helps you to have, um, a healthy appetite for carnivore foods. So it just kind of resets all of that. So yeah, that's what we're looking at. And then one of the key components with the tea, so you're not a coffee drinker, this would be true with tea, coffee, any hot drinks, is that those you it's food first, it's very food focused. So during this priming period, we're getting rid of sweeteners, we're getting rid of any kind of powders, we're getting rid of um, anything that um, we're not getting our calories from liquids. So we're getting our calories from food first, and we're letting the other stuff go. So just keep in mind that with your tea, it, you will have it after your meal is ideal if possible. And you will eat as soon as you wake up in the morning, there'll be food first. Um, so it's like a little training that you're going through. It's a, it's a training to get yourself um, really in the feasting mode and to get yourself used to eating um, a good amount of highly nutritious food as you sail along your journey. I was, a lot of people will do this to start out carnivore. So I was excited to hear, I didn't realize that you have, you are already carnivore. You're two months in. And so this is this like a super boost to the process to help mm -hmm. that help everything get reset. And for you specifically, this is going to be beautiful. Most people use it in preparation to fast or in preparation to just stay carnivore because they're having a compliance issue. They can't, they just can't stay on track. They just keep on going back into the carb hole. Um, for you, uh, this is very strategic because we're looking to increase body fat and increase your muscle mass and increase your your appetite and your capacity to eat so i'm kind of excited about this this time this is really cool yeah 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 i it's just i mean there are a few little niggles that i want to get rid of and i think my body possibly needs to i need to eat more protein to allow, mm. my, allow my body to heal mm -hmm. the problem i have is I'm, i struggle to eat it so yeah. it's yep. Yeah. You mentioned when you uh, upped your fats that the uh, protein decreased. Is that it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's the other thing. So, and I don't want to drop my fats because the fats have been huge in, in the um, really re reducing the anxiety, the menopausal mm -hmm. symptoms, um, all that. So I don't want to lose that. Yes. So I have got to find a way of keeping the fats, but increasing mm -hmm. my protein. So it's, it'll, yeah, it'll be a challenge. So mm -hmm. when you say liquids, does that also mean fatty lattes? <laughs> oh, <laughs> good question. You know, it, uh, it can. How many are you talking? How, how many, where are we at with the fatty lattes? I have three a day. Okay. Sure. Um, before, but three okay. normally. So they'll just be handled, uh, just take them as a dessert. Is yeah. what will be best um, because having them before the meal will kill your appetite and you'll yeah. just want to keep on cruising, which that may be appropriate for you later down the road, just depending on how your goals are and how your body composition, how you're feeling. If you, we've been able to get that body fat to come up a little bit, um, then that, you know, could be something down the road, but for this period of time, um, just keep it after the food. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And is your fourth fatty latte is that right before bed or is it just true? no that's just that's just if because of the way I work so I don't have set work hours so I can be working at quarter past seven in the morning then back in for an hour or so and then out again so I don't have set times when I can eat or drink so it tends mm -hmm. to be so if I've got like an hour between clients quite instead of eating I will have yes. a fatty latte Yes, I understand completely. I am a grab and go person and just mom life. And I'm just, just like swoosh to the kitchen. What's there? Swoosh out of the kitchen. And I just kind of need to grab something quick. So the priming process, you do need to slow down a little bit and give yourself more time for your meals. And so it does, it is kind of time consuming to go through that. Um, and what I do is I have cooked meats just ready to go at a moment's notice yes. i've just got my staples that are just my fridge is loaded and i've got everything ready so that you know when i have the time to eat make the time to eat that it doesn't it doesn't take an inordinate amount of time to get my food going yeah, yeah. i even yeah. have done um like what M coach emily loves to call a ribeye rescue where you yeah. do a quick ribeye 
And sometimes I'll throw a couple in the air fryer so yes. that I can literally just grab one. And if I have to eat it cold, I just eat it cold. Mm -hmm. so onion is really interesting as you go through your carnivore journey that you, there are foods that you'd never thought you would eat cold. And then all of a sudden you're like, this tastes great. Ground beef, cold ground beef. Who knew? Delicious. I, yeah, <laughs> I prefer a steak cold. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. That is. I slice, I slice it thin and then put butter on the top and salt. Oof, lovely. And that, Beautiful. that I love. And I can. Eat, in fact, I sometimes have that for breakfast. Absolutely. Uh, really? That's yeah. a perfect yeah. breakfast. I mean, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't see the problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> and I think maybe variety is key for you as well because you say you can't have a whole slab of steak in one in front of you. Mm. So I think, uh, yeah, smaller appetizers or what you can call it or, yeah. or, you know different kinds in front of them may help you get those proteins in yes so what kind of um meals do you think you will eat uh while you're priming what do you have anything in mind fish. i'm good with fish and right. i tend to be able to eat more fish than i do so i can have a huge piece of fish or two um sea bass fillets on my plate and actually i can probably eat most of those um steak i do struggle with I can I can eat a little bit, but I've I've worked out if I have steak and egg and cheese, it kind of mixes it up a bit, and it's enough. It's almost like I've got to trick my head into mm. into that it's if it's all different flavors and different textures, I seem to be I can eat more. Oh yes, that was super important for me during priming, mm. and I actually did uh, some of your carnivore foods. I don't really eat very much right now, but some of your spiced meats, you know, salami, just uh, cheeses, you know, things like that during this during this short period of time, I did include more of those types of foods, the saltier foods, because I I, I just needed it to to get this foundation going right. I needed to add in those other foods. Yeah, it's kind of like um, those foods are really good for like a finisher or even an appetizer. So I've, mm -hmm. I did the same, Coach Emily. I'd find myself picking at those while I'm prepping the food or having mm -hmm. them just kind of like that after, you know, that little bit after something like a, a meaty dessert, if you would. <laughs> so, yeah, just to make sure you really are full. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Right. The, the problem I have is sometimes in the evening, well, quite a few evenings I work and because I work and do fitness, I can't eat huge amounts and then go to work mm -hmm. because I get terrible indigestion. I mean, you, you just can't work out after, after eating that amount of food. So I'm going to have to jiggle around and eat most of mine probably in the day and then have yeah. supper when I get in. Um, so yeah, it's it'll be it'll be an interesting uh, interesting challenge. <laughs> yeah. So how long do you think that you might prime for? Typically, the priming period is a couple of weeks, but us gals have all done it more longer than that. Um, have you thought about that at all? I haven't. I want to see how I go. I mean, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do for two weeks definitely. All right. And Ooh, then I'll right see. After I've got to give it a go. I've got to yes. I've got to really otherwise I think any shorter length of time isn't gonna I'm not gonna see any difference so I was thinking two weeks and then we'll reassess I'll redo my body comp and see how actually I'm coping and uh, and then we'll go from there okay so. should we do some questions ladies there are some questions in the chat yeah. cool. yes love okay them. I'll do um JA's first and yes. Pastor Deck, would you do the honors yes I actually was actually going to answer right now in the chat. So JA, I saw your question. Should I feel hungry for the next meal or should I still feel somewhat full? And JA is priming. Um, so we uh, want you to uh, eat like it's your job, as Coach Raymond would always say. So even if you're not hungry, we want you to eat. This is all about finding your hunger and satiety signals. And they might be confused right now or they're not right there, there yet. So um, eat even though you are not hungry what do you think right emily yeah no i agree with that completely um so this is kind of a, a different we're not we're not there yet we'll get there uh we'll get there where you go with your hunger cues you'll go with your satiety cues that's kind of down the road um but for right now just go ahead and you know time for a meal have your next meal this is kind of a discipline period where you're just getting yourself nourished and so that's um stick with it in that way absolutely 
Great. Next question. Thank you. That's ill and she's asking if snacks are necessary. She's already struggling with three meals coming from OMAD. Um, yeah, um, during the first week we do recommend snacks. So we, as we just mentioned, use them to see if you are really hungry or not. So if you're doubting yourself after a meal, just try to have a snack and um, some days you may, some meals you may not have it and other, other times you do. And your, your appetite will open up. I know you come from OMAD. But uh, with priming, your appetite will open up. Coaches? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first week, the, just the three meals, I would say, yeah, try three meals for sure. And then if you can sneak, sneak in some snacks, uh, that would be great. One thing that's really good to help with that is um, if you don't have an issue with dairy is cheese. Cheese will definitely open up that appetite. So um, when it's about snack time or it's been, you know, a couple, a little bit from your last meal, go ahead, try some cheese. See if that doesn't help open up that appetite a little bit. Those are great tips. The first thing is uh, most important is the meals for sure. Um, and so, but, you know, we can do different varieties with it for different situations. You can do five small meals, five to six small meals, if that's better for, in, you know, indigestion, things like that. Um, you can kind of front load where you do most of your a bigger meal first and your meals get a little bit smaller during the day. Um, try if you can, even if you can just get a bite, you know, if you're kind of looking at this and you're like, you've got your three meals figured out, if you can just have like a little tiny, you know, bite or two of something and then keep yourself on track with the meals, that would be great. Okay. Or have a slice of latte, right? Um, yeah. Coach yeah, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> is that what you intend to do, Coach Jane, is sneak in those fatty lattes oh, yeah. in between? There you go. <laughs> yep, that works. Well, I can, get, I can get my fat up quite a lot with the fatty lattes because I'm getting about 60, 60 to 80 grams of fat of butter nice. in mm. the fatty lattes. All right. Yeah. So times you four. Wonderful. Them. How you yeah. make them, Jane? Do you want to tell us how what, what your, your specifics with it is? So I just get um, farm uh, grass-fed butter if I can, raw if possible. And I don't measure it. I don't waste it. No, it's really. okay. Just give us an um, estimate. I just, kind of, I just kind of cut a big chunk, slice it up into a, a bowl, into a, 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 di a, a jug, salt, and I use a cap full of vanilla extract. Ooh. I just dip that in and then hot water and whiz it up. And that's – sometimes I add an egg, uh, a, a egg yolk, mm -hmm. and sometimes I don't. It, it just depends on – Oh, you're doing it with just butter oh, quite a bit. Just yeah. butter only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Delicious. So yeah, and it's I love it. I mean, it's so easy to drink. It stops me having tea. It stops me having coffee, and it 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 stops me being hungry. But mm. that's a problem if I'm going to be priming. So I am going to have to wiggle that around a bit and and see how it works. But I think I think I can I think I'll rely on a lot on snacks because that will be the way. I can get around that and work. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's if you have to do that, we recommend um, folks who have uh, digestive issues or have had previous surgery, stomach surgery, um, priming looks a lot different for them. They sometimes have to break things up in smaller meals. So if that's the way you have to do it just because of your work schedule, that's perfectly acceptable. You know, the whole point is get the nutrition in, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, what, what sort of food were you eating when you were priming then? How much? Okay. Oh, that's an interesting question. I watched, Sorry. I, watched, <laughs> I watched Stephen do it, and that's very different. Uh-huh. So yeah. what, what did you ladies eat? Yeah, keep in mind, well, everyone's different, so this is not yeah. a recommended amount. Mm -hmm. size. Yeah, so, all right, I, I started off with a kilo, so that's 2.2 pounds. But it's really went up, to, it revved up in, in the, within a week up to five pounds. Ooh, wow. And that was sometimes in one meal. So it, it, it was crazy for me. I got really scared and, you know, not scared, but just worried. Mm. But I got the okay from Coach Raymond and Bella and gave my permission, the permission to eat. <laughs> and I just went, went for it for six weeks. Yeah, definitely around the five pound mark. Okay. Yeah. So I did something kind of like what's up posted right now from Ayana, uh, where you, when you're doing like a three-part meal, that's kind of what my priming looked like. I just ate. 
as much as I could. I didn't measure it. I estimate that at one point I got up to two, two and a half pounds. Um, and typically now that's down to like a pound. But um, yeah, so I just really, but I did it just like what Ayana put in there. I broke it up into uh, three parts and just ate whenever I felt like it and really leaned into it, especially the dairy. I found out a lot about myself and cheese during <laughs> priming. <laughs> a lot. And Emily? Yeah, I was priming during uh, Christmas time. And so uh, I had a lot of variety too. Just a lot of the things that we had around for our holiday meals. Um, and we had the cheese spreads and we had the spiced meats. And so those were a huge part of it. As far as volume goes, I was still eating a lot of volume just in my uh, overall life, actually. And that continued right to priming. So I I didn't measure it. I guessed that I was in the three to four pounds a day, something like that. So I had... I was, I was really going for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm lucky if I eat probably 300 grams, 400 grams of steak. A day? Yeah. Okay. And then, so I, so for me, a meal at the moment would be, so my first thing in the morning is tea. Yes. We need gotcha. to get that out of there. Yeah, the <laughs> then I will have, um, probably a small piece of steak cut up cold with butter on and probably that's probably I don't know I'm guessing here probably 150 200 grams ish um and then I possibly don't eat again then until mid-afternoon um, I will have a fatty latte at some point during that time and then we will eat in the evening and it's either a couple of uh fish um so fish fillets of, of uh, sea bass or a piece of salmon um, with butter. And that's probably it. Okay. So that's less than a pound a day. Yeah. Oh, okay. quite. Yes. Yes. So, so we start with. <laughs> which, is, which is why I think I'm not eating enough. And I've thought this yes. for a long time. Yep. 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 But I'm so, also, I'm also like, my head's like, but, but your body knows what it's doing. But I don't think it does on this because I think this is something's overriding what my body actually needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Time for a reset. Time for a reset. Yeah. And so yeah. and that's, that's honestly why we say nobody has to prime. It's, you know, you've been with us for quite some time mm -hmm. and you've known about carnivore. Well, Steven's been doing this for years and years. And so it's just the right time for you. This is the right time for you to say, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try to give myself this foundation and see if it can make an overall difference. And you're doing it for your long-term health. You're yes. doing it to get your body at a spot that you can up your nutrition. You're in very active, you know, you're in your fifties. Like you've got a lot riding on this. You have a lot, you have a big life to live. And so if you can get that nutrition bumped up, this can be a beautiful foundation to get that in the right direction. So, but it is the mental journey is tricky because, you know, it's new and our brains don't want to do something new. And that's why doing this in community is the way to do it. This is why this was so brilliant that, you know, we all learned about this in community because we do Sorry. have to support each other and we do need that encouragement. We do need to hear from other people like it's going to be OK. And it it, it, uh, it helps to sift through kind of that. It's all, you know, sometimes we'll call it the addict brain, sugar brain. It's not exactly that for you. It's just, well, I've always done it this way. Yeah, it's, just, right. it's just the resistance, the resistance to change and try something new. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it is a, a leap of faith on that. Yeah, because I've never been one to diet, so I've never dieted really. Um, I probably, when I was about eight, seventeen, I had a six months where I would, so I would buy the diet shakes. Yeah. I was I was working in a, in a small place, and I used to go out for lunch. I used to buy myself this shake, and then I would be bored because it was just a drink. And then I would go and buy myself a cake. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh wow! When, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't particularly big. I, it was just, it was a fad. But I probably mm -hmm. did that for six months, and that is the only time I can ever remember actually doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. I have ever since then. I have, I don't count calories. Never been interested in that. I'm not one of those people, um, and I've always eaten 
what I thought was healthy, though at the time, mm-hmm. sometimes it did include pasta and things like that years ago. Um, and bread has never been my thing. So I probably haven't eaten bread for 15, 20 years, certainly not any amount. Um, and a lot of the stuff I did eat, so anything um, sweet, cake-wise and biscuits were homemade. So although you had the sugar in it, we didn't have the the artificial sweeteners or the vegetable oils, everything I cooked with butter. I cooked, I've always done that. Um, so th- I think the other thing that stopped me doing this diet before and stopped me priming was I've never done diets. Yeah. You never had anybody be in charge of how much no. you eat or where you no. eat. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, so it's, and I've never been one to, to do what other people are doing. Good job. Yeah. Good. You know, so it's, it's, so now it's like I, what, it's actually listening to everybody in the meetings. Good. And seeing the comments and seeing what people are doing and the benefits they're getting. Yes. Right, isn't it? Yeah. And so when I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm for 53, I think I'm healthy. Yes, you are. But I am getting joint aches and pains. Okay. I get um, very, I get energy drops. Yep. Almost like you would get if you had a sugar drop. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I don't have sugar and I don't have sweeteners. Have never, I haven't done for, for, for as long as I can remember. So, so something's causing my energy to drop. And so yep. listening to everybody, the only thing I can think is I'm not eating enough. It's yep. a huge possibility. possibility. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about sleep. I've got a question posted up here. Coach Adek, would you do the honors? This is from Nirit. It's one of the uh, members of our gang. Hi there, Nirit. Was having trouble staying asleep for a couple of months. Cut back protein. Last meal, no later than 3 p.m. Helps a lot. Increase fat. Problem is back. Eating at 5 or 6 is too often. What to do? Eating at 5 or 6 too often. I think that might be five or six in the evening. So I'm wondering if going back to the earlier um, would help. Um, Luckily for us, Nurit is a part of the September challenge. And so we would love to dive into this more with our buddy, our member, our pal Nurit in the Steak and Butter Gang. So um, if we misinterpreted your question, please let us know and we will try and uh, address it in one of our Zoom meetings. Okay, next question. Are you all familiar with this gene? I just had to look it up. I am we've not. Had, we've had members that have had this um, before. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. So this is the- why we have Steven. Right? <laughs> Definitely comment this question with our resident expert in all things science, blood, genetic conditions. We have had this before. Absolutely, Carol. Um, So, you know, definitely you can reach out to this in the gang. um, But it's uh, we're not we don't have an answer for you at this point other than yes, that that some folks that have had this gene have worked with. We have been through this process. Priming for sure. It basically just for the audience, it basically has to do with the ability to process vitamins, folic acid, yep. those type of things. And my understanding is that the symptoms can vary greatly. So I think we would kind of need uh, more information. Um, but, uh, you know, priming is great. The nutrient dense food that you're going to get um, is going to help you get what's missing. So I would say that yes, but we probably need more information to give you a more full answer. Okay, next questions from Teresa. What can I do to help with histamine reactions to butter and other dairy products? Mm. Yeah. He is a good option to oh, yes. try to see oh. if you'll have a reaction to that. Yes. Um, it's always helpful to do one of two things. You either remove everything and start from ground zero and add one thing at a time to see what you'll react to and what you won't. Or you remove one thing at a time and see if the reactions go away. So it kind of depends on how much uh, butter and other dairy products you currently have in your current diet. Coaches? 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just a case of trying the different fats and maybe trying to see whether you whether you still react if it's heated or if it's cold. Mm -hmm. um, you can also try grass-fed and raw. Um, some people don't react to raw butter and raw milk, but they do other things. So it's, it's, it is a case of just trial and error, as, as Coach Terry says, and just trying different things. Okay. Next question. Go ahead, Coach Adair. Coach oh, Adair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On Oman, can you have fatty latte in the morning? So would that be considered breaking a fast or a meal, Coach Emily? Yes, for sure. Any, any kind of food, fats, proteins, anything in that. So it's just, it's just no longer an OMAD. <laughs> so it can be your own thing that you can try. You can just be, you know, uh, I wouldn't, you know, have a fasting app going or track your fast or anything like that. So it would just be kind of like, Hey, I'm eating dinner. Plus in the morning I have a fatty latte. That's not necessarily a bad thing as long as you're not under eating overall, but it's definitely not a fast. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. Actually, I've come to learn that um, just through my own journey, that any liquids in any significant amount, so like if you're going to drink 16 ounces of water or sparkling water before a meal, it's going to inhibit your appetite. It's going to squelch it. I mean, that's what they teach us in the traditional programs, right? Sure. Drink a ton of water because it delays the appetite. Yeah. So if you can make it a dessert, um, that's best. And I actually struggle with this myself because like Jane, I love them <laughs> so much. Um, we both have our different take on how to make them and you can adapt it any way you want. Um, but yeah, I have to literally tell myself, okay, you can't have your fatty lattes. Like what I used to do with coffee. Can't have it until you eat something. And don't just eat a little something. Sit down, eat a meal, be mindful. Don't just, you know, if you're going to grab and go, at least grab and go, because like we talked about being moms. If you're going to grab and go, grab and go substantially. Mm -hmm. Take that cold ribeye with you. Don't be afraid to eat it in the car. I'm not. Oh, I'm sure people pulled up to me at a red light while I'm gnawing on a steak and it's okay. It's okay, moms, we can do this. And, you know, um, our, we have friends in the space that do meat cookies in the front uh, way of burger patties. I've seen coach Emily do it, you know, meat bars. So yeah, definitely um, try to eat something before the fat tea latte. Okay. And then somebody had asked for the recipe. There is a recipe um, on my YouTube site uh, at Cherishing Your Health, uh, at Cherishing Your Health on YouTube, and then also Coach Jane and Coach Stephen have their recipe, I believe, on their YouTube on mm -hmm. Coach Stephen's YouTube channel as well, and their own version. But basically, real quick, in a nutshell, we're talking just what Coach Jane mentioned. We're talking egg yolks. We're talking butter maybe a little bit of salt if you prefer it, and hot water, froth it up, delicious. Yeah, so it's basically like a, almost like a carnivore version of a bulletproof coffee. Okay, Ooh. See, we're doing good on time, ladies. Yes. I'm just so curious if there are any other members or people watching who have the same experience as you, Jane, because we usually, People come to priming or to us because their main goal is weight get loss or fat loss. And you are, we want to gain weight, which is quite, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Julie, if we can snack during week one of the priming, can coffee with heavy whipped cream, is it whipped cream just, just count as a snack? Oh, that's a good question. I'm going to say uh, no. I'm going to say that you want your snacks and your meals to be actual food. We don't want to be drinking our calories. The fatty latte is great, but even Coach Jane mentioned it, that that's part of the reason why she's priming is because she wants to get more real food in. Coaches? Yeah, have it with something. If it, it's just, It can be a small snack. You can have a small snack first, and it can be the end of your snack. 
but don't let it be the beginning of the snack. And it's not can't sub out for your snack. But if you were just going to have maybe just a little thing of meat and cheese, finish it with a, with a cup of coffee with some heavyweight cream. I'm completely fine with that. Yeah. Munch on pork rinds with your coffee. Mm -hmm. Pork rinds and butter. Yeah. That's why this is the butter dish channel. Because uh -huh. we all actually, Coach Adek, it's interesting. When oh, we yeah. started this channel, Coach Adek was not eating butter, and now she does. I did not like the taste at all in the beginning. I think, two, yeah, two years, and suddenly um, I had to eat butter because they were, I, hadn't had, I was on the way, and uh, there wasn't anything else. So I forced myself, which was fine because now I love it a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, officially a butter dish gal. <laughs> oh, in <laughs> every way. way. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Um, Coach Jane has become like our butter boss. Yes. She's the butter group. babe. She's the butter babe. <laughs> yes, I yes. miss it now. It's strange. You know, it's <laughs> almost like that. You know, when you years ago you used to crave a chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I crave butter. <laughs> Where's my butter? Yeah, it, literally. I mean, I, I, I've had uh, so not this weekend. The weekend before, I was away with with at a family, and uh, I could eat some snacks with butter, but a fatty latte just wasn't gonna. Would have been too awkward to explain. It was just yes. Um, so I didn't have it, and I came in the door and literally put my suitcase down. I went, okay, fatty latte now. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. I, I mean, just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Emily. Just, just needed it. It's so good. And this is the point and this is the goal and this is the vision that I'm really hoping for you with the priming is I'm hoping that that same thing gets you to like a meaty feast, gets you to this meaty meal. And, but you have to train it first. So when you know that something is good for you, it's good for your hormones. You're after these metabolic changes that we're wanting. You kind of have to go through this process first as a discipline. And then your body wakes up. It's like, that's yes. what I want. And yes. so I love it that you kind of got there with the butter and the fatty lattes. And that's my, my hope, you know, to see if we're down the road a little bit, because yeah. I've certainly seen it happen with Steven because his appetite yeah. has opened way up. He eats gorgeous meals. His body recomp is coming along. Um, and so I'm excited to see, you know, how that, how that comes to be for priming for you as well. Yeah. Cause yeah. at the minute he finishes off mine. I'm sure <laughs> he does. Oh, oh, oh yeah. no, he has, leave, he has to leave your meals alone. It's already too small. I know. <laughs> yeah. You have to be like, Jane doesn't share food. Mm. Yes. Just a little, yeah. little hand snack. <laughs> anyway. So we really appreciate everybody coming out. We are going to follow coach Jane. Please join us on our next live. Make sure that you are subscribed and kindly hit that like button, share this with a friend if you've learned something. And we look forward to seeing you guys during the next live as we help Coach Jane through her priming process. We love all of you. And if you haven't already joined the Steak and Butter Gang, please do so at, what is the website, gals? It's SBG, somebody put it in the chat. Oh I know gosh. it's sbgmeetup.com, I believe. Yes. You got it. Yep. So, and if you and if you are a part of the second Bunny game, we will see you very soon. All right, everybody, have a great day. Thank you. Bye.